Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Dylan, and this is Austin. Austin. And we are Theseus Games Music. Theseus Music Games. <laughs> uh, if you know us from our gaming channel, we are totally different people when we play instruments. Yes, I suppose. definitely. Not really. Anyways, <clears throat> same people, just uh, we actually talk more now. Uh, uh, and I think we're... I don't know. Would you say we're better at playing instruments than playing Cabela's or worse at our instruments Dude, than playing Cabela's? Dude, if you read Cabela's? the comments, we're way better at playing anything other than Cabela's. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God bless. That's uh, if, if you didn't know, follow us on Theseus Live, which has been almost... Dot Live. Which has been almost exclusively gaming content, but it's meant for everything. If we do anything other than music. And then this is meant for specifically music-related uh videos yeah uh we kind of got one track minded with our gaming stuff with cabela's because that's the only thing that seems to do well at all for us everybody's trying to get that that sweet taste those sweet views but no one has the game except for us <laughs> yeah, i don't know it's it's crazy because some of our videos got 12 million views some have got Four or five million? In the last two weeks, we, we had two videos casually pop off to two million, which we did not know happened. I know. I want to see how <laughs> old they were. I, w I want to go back and look at it. Hey, dude, it was not. It was like one last week and one the week before. And I was like, what the hell? What happened with these? <laughs> I don't know. But they're just like little ticking time bombs. Who knows when one of them is just going to pop off? It really does seem to be completely random. Now, the cool thing is, is that the views are slightly translating right now because we you've posted nothing but... Lethal Company. Lethal Company videos. And apparently Lethal Company is popping off again. Yeah. As far as I know. Uh, I really, really like Lethal Company. I love Phasmophobia. But Phasmophobia kind of died out a couple of years ago. But there's still, like the game has room to, there's room to do stuff. Yeah. When it comes to Lethal Company, there's not really room to do anything. It's like you play the game, you get as far as you can, then you die. Play the game, you get as far as you can, die. Now, of course, there's mods, right? Yes. There's modifications you can do to make the game more fun, but good luck hitting your symbol and your tom. Good luck hitting your symbol and your tom. I bet your elbow will absolutely smack that thing. I don't believe that. I believe you're going to definitely hit that thing at some point. I kind of touched it a little bit there. <laughs> Just a little bit. That's, there's a reason why I lifted it up actually above your shoulder is so you could move your arm. Yeah. So what's going on with your week as far as, I guess, I guess life things. If there's anything tailored to music, anything you figured out here recently? Tailored to the Swift. Sorry. When you said tailored, I was like, <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> Uh, Taylor Towards Music, I have been constantly working on, I've been constantly playing this thing, my yeah. Ableton Push 2. The reason why is because I'm trying to justify getting a Push 3, but until I learn how to use the Push 2 in a very confident way, I can't get it because it's too grand, but mm. it takes this whole setup you see right here and makes it down to just that. It's literally just the board. I say do it. <laughs> I will do it after I learn how this thing fucking works. I just got to be able to use it in my uh, in writing and being able to make music that I like. Because what they're doing is like you're almost building sounds from scratch and then you go back to your favorites. If you want to build a sound from someone who's like on YouTube or something like that, and uh, it's like, okay, I want to use that sound. How do they make that sound? They make the sound and then you learn how to make the sound, which makes it easier for you to make it later. Yeah. But man... Trying to make music uh, with like saw waves and analog stuff. And it's like, it goes all the way down to like the very core of what a wave, like a, just one single wave is a yeah. note, a single note, exactly how it is. <clears throat> and it's really, it's really freaking cool. I love this thing, honestly. Uh, but I am trying to make it the main focus to where I don't ever touch a keyboard. Because right now this will run off of my third-party plugins. That's the one advantage to push two. Is yeah. You can run third-party plugins because the laptop can. Push three only runs native plugins. So Ableton plugins that you've bought. And I have a lot because uh, I bought like the Elite Pack, which Ableton 12's out. Yeah. And I'm really excited about that. They have some cool things in there. And I am definitely going to upgrade to Ableton 
twelve. Uh, there's Is that a, still like full price if you upgrade? No, or? it's it's I think like two hundred fifty bucks, maybe three hundred bucks. I don't remember how much Ableton was. I think it was like eleven. Hundred with, with everything that you got, wasn't it? Was it? I not? think it was like seven hundred. Okay. I feel like it was somewhere around seven hundred. Oh well, if and I got Ableton push too. Yeah. So probably all together was close to like a thousand or fifteen hundred or something like that. But I I know the upgrade is not that much. And everyone's like, well, is the upgrade worth it? I think it will be worth it, mainly for the search function. Just for the search function, it's like, oh, I want to get this bass drum, but I want to have, it's not exactly this one. And you can just search it, and then suddenly there's a bunch of them that sound very close to it. I'm like all about that. So what, you can take like WAV files of other uh, like sounds, other instruments, and just drop them in? Yeah, it's a sampler, I think it's called. It might have it in this too already, but uh, you just drop it in, and it will find... Hmm. bass drums that sound like that which i thought was really cool so i really want that as far as uh yeah i want the ableton push three but it's two thousand dollars now normally you can i can actually there is a way you can buy the push three and then it will be a standard corded one because you can actually do the same thing where i could still bring all this stuff and use vsts yeah and everything like that um and uh it'll you can upgrade it later uh, how big of a screen? Like, it's not going to be something like that. Is it going to have, like, an actual... It's this. Just that? It's just that. I feel like that'd be kind of annoying to kind of program everything. It's an instrument, man. you got to learn how to use it. It's one of those things where it's like, just learning this would be a skill, mm -hmm. you know? Because, like, I'll go through, and you can't see it, but, like, pulling up an analog wave, and uh, it has every single adjustment. You just have to go through different menus. Yeah. But good Lord, I was like, I started just messing with stuff and I've, it's been on my bed with me every night and I still haven't made anything that I like, <laughs> <laughs> but I'll go into like sounds that are preset sounds and I'll look at like the chain and the chain is insane. I'm like, how do people think of this stuff? You know, <laughs> the chain is insane. The bro. chain is insane, <laughs> man. <laughs> Ow. Yours has a punch. <laughs> oh, yeah. I love hitting things. But we actually uh, took the time to separate the vocals and the music, and we took the time to make the music sound as good as we possibly can. So this is the best we can make it sound right now. Sorry, I, I I was looking up and then looked over to make sure we were recording. That's pretty good. If you think that sounds great, let us know, please, because we think it's as good as we can get it without having bottom mics. So what we want to do, what we want to do to make things sound better is I want to replace my drum set. I already got a new snare. Forgot about that. The snare is nice. Yes. It's a very good DW. DW snare collector series. I got a collector series DW snare. Totally worth it. Uh, I do think that we absolutely have to have a bottom mic in order to make the thing really shine. Yeah. But, uh, I want my entire drum set replaced, all my cymbals, maybe not that china because I fucking love that china. It's so snappy. The reason why is because it's so small. Yeah. It's a little tiny guy. Yeah. It's a very small, and I don't know why, but I've really grown to like it. Like, I used to hate it because I used to like really deep chinas. Yeah. That one just cuts through. Oh, it cuts. Yeah. Plus no issues with that. It cuts through, and it's like it dies faster. So it doesn't sit, it doesn't feel as overwhelming to hit. Yeah. <clears throat> there was a, a, a I'm just I'm remembering this now. So when Chris Crummett 
was I, I took a master class on editing from Chris Kummer at one I time. I remember when you bought that. It was very cool, really cool. It was all about specifically miking drums. And he was he was talking about people usually use cymbals that are way too big. Do you remember that? Uh, I don't remember that part now. So he would only he I'm not saying only, he he'd use whatever, but he used smaller cymbals intentionally for songs that were uh, faster. So if they're fast, you don't want your cymbal to just wash over the entire thing. You want it to be hit and die, hit and die. Yeah. So he would use smaller cymbals. Like that China would be really great for an extremely fast breakdown. Yeah. Uh, a big China would be good for a very, very like knocked loose breakdown where it's very slow, where it's... <laughs> Now, that is not how you're supposed to use that symbol. You're supposed to use that symbol for like. So, yeah. Like if people could, if people wanted to justify having two Chinas, I completely understand why. Big China for super slow stuff, small China for really really punchy stuff. When you want to get the crowd moving, like big big mosh pit. That's another reason why I want just a whole another set of symbols. It's like yeah, I have all my great symbols. I have enough of what I need, but in order to change it up, get different types of feels and all that stuff, I want a whole nother, like a full set of other high end symbols. Right. You almost need one of like every size, but that would be for like, ex that would be for uh, like recording very, very particular stuff. I think you only need like one set of bigger symbols and one set of smaller symbols kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. You know, like a, a hi hats, I feel like it's just to taste. Yeah. I mean, I don't really know unless you had like a jazz style hi hat of the kind I don't know. Some very dry hi hats, which I do want. I feel I like I do want a set of just dry symbols. And then they have like crispy, crispy hi hats for like rock, which I like a lot. That was the Chris Crumman masterclass, which I really liked, really liked watching. It was very interesting to watch him mic everything up. I was like, oh, there's like a lot to this. And I was mm -hmm. like, man, I really got to get some better drum mics. So one thing is replace the drums, all DW drums, brand new heads, good, nice, double ply and super nice tones. Uh, replace all the symbols and then for you to get the d or the uh earthworks drum mics yes it will happen i will own those goddamn mics and he's gonna get one he's gonna get two for just a snare top and bottom which if i stay a four piece won't be too bad because the pack comes with four of them but you won't plus when i get my <laughs> dw drum set it's gonna be a five piece yeah which you can buy them separately for like they're three hundred and fifty bucks. It's the cheapest mic of all of them, so that's nice. That is the one nice thing. Yeah, the one that's used the most, dude. The overhangs and the bass drum mic, holy Christ! Six seven hundred dollars a piece. Bass drum mic moved a lot. Sorry. Oh. Huh. It was like way off, but hitting the shit out of it. Yes. One in Ableton, push three, only to keep it as one separate entity. It would be insane. It's and it's it does session mode specifically or not session mode it does like grid mode yeah. whatever the grid is it's for repeating and looping stuff. The only part that gets confusing is that it has inputs and everything like that. How I want to know if Ableton makes like guitar tone plugins and like how good are they? Because uh, I mean I, I could I could run my Axe Effects, <clears throat> you know I could run mm -hmm. my Axe Effects with Push Three, and just that's my whole rig. But it would be just great if I just had my push three. <laughs> yeah, I never thought about that. I mean, Ableton does almost everything in the book besides, like, I haven't seen anything guitar tone wise. They probably do because it's uh, Ableton Live's really meant for electronic music. It is, yeah. but it's the reason why I wanted it so bad is because it is meant for live purposes. Mm -hmm. It is specifically designed to not crash while you're live. <laughs> you could have literally 30 different tracks. And like a whole bunch of things connected to it, like switches on the Axe Effects, lighting stuff, and 
It'll be at like three percent usage. <laughs> God, I've had it to where like in set in session mode when you're recording stuff, I've used up to 80%, 90% on the CPU, but only because it was getting overloaded by many different mastering programs. Yeah. <laughs> the mastering programs will definitely mess that up. Yeah. It was, uh, it, but it, it, oh, it's only when we record like, like, uh, oh my God. Obsessed. Obsessed pushes by computer. Yeah. <laughs> like, that song has a lot going on. I was going to say, I thought you were about to talk about whenever we wrote that song for Katy Perry. <laughs> okay. I just want to make that joke. <laughs> Continue on. Anyway. <laughs> that was kind of cool. Circus in here. <laughs> right now we have, uh, I'm impressed with our setup situation. Finally, I think it's going to start sounding really good. We're going to have to find topics. This is something that we haven't really discussed, but we want to discuss. We got to find, figure out a way to make this kind of a formatted show just so that people could stay interested. It's like, okay, we talk about this for a minute. We talk about that for a minute because you could do like news. You could do all kinds of stuff, but we'd have to do a little bit of research each time. And then yeah. not only that, like every intro and outro and like jam session, I want, I do want there to be like some kind of. written music before yeah. instead of us just fucking winging it because winging it is fun oh it's very fun really fun but i bet it's not very entertaining for other people <laughs> i don't know some people might be like god damn if they're just winging it oh man remember that song <laughs> yes just swinging it is always fun just kind of jamming around trying to learn how to write stuff I, we will figure out how to have time to write certain things because i'll be like oh i'll start the thing off and be like listen to this austin's never heard this play it real quick and then it's like what would you think to add to this right now you know ah, fuck. and then eventually he will have a keyboard of some type or maybe uh, a novation launch pad over there so he can play the keys of some type yes i want to i do want to get it to where even if they're like a verse and a chorus even just a verse and a chorus part just like kind of get an idea going and then actually sitting down and writing it and just i guess podcasting the way through it i feel like that'd be really fun that would be it would be interesting because it would be uh the thing that we would have to figure out is how to, I guess we don't have to because I have this Mac and I have my iPad. So you can be like, go to this section right here and just hit it. And then we record yeah. of some type. The only problem is that like my truly desired version of this is to record the drums and the guitar into this, right? <coughs> but that's hard to do. There's a lot that goes into that. And I think I could have done it. I think I would have solved it too if, if you had told me about the in out thing before yes we figured it out to where everything's recording nicely but now <laughs> if i really think about how i want it to be set up now that we know how to send out certain places mm -hmm. i can probably get it set up the way i want yeah you have a uh, guitar and drums just go to i As guess inputs like, into this yeah and then have that music's output and the vocal output go into there that's all you have to do. And I'll be able to record into this. And then the only thing is, is like monitoring. Yeah. Monitoring is going to be a little odd, but it shouldn't be that big of an issue. <laughs> it's going to be funny seeing like the line go from like here to there to here to there to there. <laughs> <laughs> but it will sound so good because the cool thing is, is that once we have that set up and I can record your drum set, it's just like, oh, ready? Record. Doot, doot, yeah. doot. You record. And then you're like, oh, I want these different drums. I I really want your Alesis drum pad here. Yeah, I need to bring that. I wanna I wanna see what I can do with it, and like if we could put something on it to where you could use it like consistently. Yeah. How many <laughs> notes does it have? Uh, nine. Either nine or eight, I believe. It's got six big pads, and I think it's got three up top. I don't remember. It's I like three don't. on the on the side, kind of like a. Yeah. 
Something like that, but... Like a wood block or whatever they call it. But there should be enough to where we can program it however we like and uh, at least keep like some kind of a standard sound on it that I know we'll use a good amount. Right, yeah. Uh, I mean, you can. I, I want you to be able to use that thing to its fullest potential and like switch things up all the time. Just like... Yeah. It's like, oh, I don't like that sound. I switched. So, yeah, I want... All the things that we want to do. I'm just glad that we got this set up right now. It is nice. Got everything running from his Axe Effects, then X32, then everything's just split out from there. Yeah. It's cool. It, Five years ago, I'd have been like, what is this madness? <laughs> Dude, never. I never thought I'd own that rack. I'm not going to lie. That rack was a lot to make. I spent I want one way too. more money than I needed to spend. I want one too, just to have the convenience of using it. It's not convenient and convenient. The not convenient part is like I integrated it with my computer. Yeah. So now it can't move hardly. It's like, just think about like if you're doing like gaming streaming or something like that and you're just walking around with your like in ear, like your pack on, just like, damn it, get up, just start running down the street and some shit. I don't know. (laughs) <laughs> something stupid <laughs> i like that you can still hear everything and i don't know it's cool wireless is the way of the future i'm surprised wireless isn't cheaper already uh there was one thing that was coming out that i really wanted which was that positive grid positive grid live amp mm-hmm. which is that still not out it's out it should be out this month it's it's either releasing or they might have pushed it back just a little bit but it's it's just because pre-orders happened Pretty sure people are starting to get them. I want one. And you're going to get one. I probably will, but I <laughs> want that drum set more for this. True. So true, I'm on yeah. hold for that. So it's like, it's like, damn, what do I get? Everything that I get has a purpose, a pretty specific purpose. Uh, the drum set for the podcast, the, Ax- the Ableton, the Ableton to shrink down to just this, be able to play live. And then if I could, uh, play this live through the live the the, the positive grid yeah. live which would be so cool because i could have everything i could have my my mic that and i wouldn't want to make it wireless for reliability sake but i could be wireless mm-hmm. you want to know one thing that we should eventually start doing we should like the few mm-hmm. songs that are pretty close to done and the one that is done we should try to play one live on the podcast. At least, like, play It's Time to Leave or do uh, Obsessed. Try to relearn them and play them on the uh, the podcast. I don't even know. Yeah, we should. We should that do that. Would, that would I have be a seven-string awesome. over there, which is... Uh, I'm playing a seven-string, but I don't need to. Yeah. It's one of those things where it's like, I like playing that because I like the guitar. Do I need to play the seven string? I don't need to, but it gives me a certain amount of range. And Dayseeker proves to me that a seven string can be poppy, which is yeah. what I want. That's the sound I want. Of course, I don't write the shit like that. I just write what comes to my head. And it just so happens that most of my shit is odd. I mean, Polivia is starting to use eight strings or have they, been they using have eight string. They, uh, Nightmare. You remember Nightmare when yeah. they did that mix? Nightmare was an H string. And then, uh, something Touch. Some song that had Touch in it. I don't remember. Too close? <laughs> no. <laughs> but yeah. I mean, I think, uh, just still based on how you write, you can make an H string and a seven sound pretty poppy. H string would be odd. Uh, okay. Uh, speaking of poppy, the fucking artist poppy. Yep. She is a, I've never seen an artist who, I don't know how she got started. Because if you look back on how she started, it is bizarre. Oh, I know. She was definitely not the kind of musician she is today. She was groomed almost. I I don't, I don't, I shouldn't say groomed, but she was pushed into a direction that was like, okay, we'll start with this and we'll go that way because people want that. Very robotic. Remember, it's like, hi, I'm Poppy. Yeah. Like, just that weird shit. But she still kind of has that. If you listen yeah. to her music, like her legitimate music, other than the heavy stuff she does every now and then, it 
it's one of the most bizarre things because she started. I don't I don't know her beginning. I just know the fact that she got to a certain point and she was not that famous, which was the weird thing. And then she got YouTube originals to come out and make her a, a show. Yeah. YouTube originals. Like, huh. which is the most weird thing is if you've a ever YouTube seen YouTube show? Yeah. Remember when like YouTube It's like originals, a paid show? It was. So, yeah, it was it was shows that would use YouTubers in a actual professional environment. So instead of it being like, okay, we're going to pay you to make a show. No, it's like, we're going to pay a production company to come out there and you're going to plan a show, make the show with these particular YouTubers. And we're going to put it out as YouTube originals. It's kind of like prime video, you know, their stuff. Mm -hmm. It was just YouTube's version. And they went to her. And if you ever see that video, it is weird. It is fucking weird. Cause she like goes into another world and it's just fucking weird. Very poppy style. And then she started, uh, what was the song that she made that was like, oh, this was it was just some random song where it was heavy as fuck. I know what you're talking about. I don't remember what it was. Uh, Bury though. me deep, six feet deep in concrete. Yeah, Con- it's called yeah. concrete. I think that was the first time she ste- like dipped her toes instead of like, oh, this is metal, but it's also not that. And yeah. then after that, it just started taking off because that song was cool. She clearly was like, I don't care about the song. In my opinion, she was like, I don't care about the song. I'm just going to make something that sounds cool and then this. And then it was over. Mm-hmm. She didn't think of anything of it. And now that's what she's known for. I know, especially with the new song with Bad Omens. Uh, yeah, which is super cool. Yeah, she. it's it's really cool because uh, the guitar, the old guitarist of Issues is now her guitarist right now. Which is so weird. It's so it's weird. It's so cool, though, because he took like a... It felt like a five or six year break from even playing live. And then all of a sudden he comes back, starts playing with Bad Wolves and then Poppy. I thought it was pretty cool. Yeah. Dude, he's got such a unique style. I still think no one really has his style. No, I I really enjoy what he does. His creativity on his guitar is just unmatched. The funny thing to me, the funny thing to me is the fact that it's like creative, but it's also very simple. Yeah. I don't know how to explain it. It's like he's found a sound that he has been able to just exploit and push and push. So it just sounds like him. Mm -hmm. And I have not heard anybody who's come close. Like when uh, the style of gent came out and issues was like the face of it, there was really no one else that could really replicate them like that. Yeah. At least in my opinion. I thought, I don't know. It's just, he's always been one of my favorite guitarists and like, I've gotten to talk to him a few times and like, I still try to talk to him on Instagram, but that doesn't happen. <clears throat> but the few times that I talked to him in person, uh, I was just telling him like, dude, I really wish I knew how to write guitar like you. Cause it, it's just awesome. I, I don't know where he's going to go. So he's playing as a hired musician for Poppy and I guess he's wanting to make money, but he made, I don't know how much money he made with issues, but I'm sure it was decent. Yeah, uh, I would assume it'd be pretty decent. Splitting I don't know what he did before issues. See, I don't either. Like he came out of left field from nowhere. I guess it was like a style thing. He pro- someone probably knew him, but like I would like to know what his sound was before issues because issues is very specific. Who knows? For all we know, he could have written some massive songs, and issues was just a fun thing. I don't know. That's very true. It's amazing what uh, some people in this world have. I don't know. It's like ah, oh, God ah. You're so good, damn it! And I don't have any way. I don't know any of his songs, but I, <laughs> I wish, I wish she I turned did. up your volume. Got ready. I was getting ready. To play. <laughs> Just turn it right back. Down. I don't know. Does he play a seven string? Uh, I feel like he, should, he does. Huh? I feel like based on the sound, he does. I think uh, one of the. One of the uh, newest issue songs before they quit wasn't on an eight string. I do know that. Hmm. I forgot what the song name was, but there is an eight string on that album. I'm somebody myself <laughs> for giving in to what I want. Ah, oh, such a good album. Mine was uh, Stinger Afflictions. <laughs> Something like. I can't imagine. I don't know it. It's been so long since I've heard it. I can't remember it. Yeah. 
I have no clue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. For me, uh, for me, when it comes to issues, mm, it's got to be like Mad at Myself is one of my favorites. It's a, it's kind of like a tie between a bunch of them, but like Stingray Affliction is, I think, perfect. Even the intro, uh, Mad at Myself, uh, King of Amarillo. Uh, there's a few others, but like those are the three that I'm just like these songs are great. Black Diamonds, yeah. They're pretty iconic songs to start off. Dude, it's crazy. And I don't even know I don't even know who made all the money off of that. <laughs> Someone out there is living rise, around. Rise. Rise. Uh, and they're still around. I didn't know that. I thought they were busted. I thought they weren't around either. Yeah, no. Uh who's still on them? I heard, yeah, because I heard their name not long ago. I was like, that's a Rise band? I think it's Spirit Box. Oh, yeah, Spirit Box did join Rise. They're a Rise band, which I was like, what? I forgot about that, yeah. Why? <laughs> <laughs> well, like, something, oh, sorry, keep going. Rise is great, but it's one of those things where I'm like, all right, the company's cool. It's great, huge, but it's it doesn't feel like Roadrunner. It doesn't feel like... It, Even like Red Bull like Records, Atlantic, Red Bull, Red Bull, Atlantic, Roadrunner. I feel like those are all huge. Ro- freaking Red Bull. If you get on Red Bull, you are doing something right. Yes. <laughs> because Red Bull only employs like 10 artists. <laughs> <laughs> like that's it. I don't even know who those are, but. A Wall Nation. Beartooth. I know Beartooth. Uh, it's the only one. A Wall Nation is the other big one that I know. That's it. Hmm. But something that you were uh, saying earlier reminded me of. Like uh, the earlier songs of issues, it's funny because like there's a lot of bands that are huge this day and age where it's like their first album is what pop them off. Like I don't know how many people in our generation, I guess because of TikTok, it's a lot more. But whenever you look at big bands like Limp Bizkit, Corn, um, what was the what was the other one? Oh, Disturbed. Down with the sickness, like Down with the sickness, was on their first album. Like, to to have the luck of a first album popping off that the way it does. Yeah, it seems like that doesn't happen anymore. Now it's just, I guess, singles. It is singles, a hundred percent. It's singles, but I mean, so it was disturbed. Yeah, it was a single. True, but still, it's just like enemy. <laughs> Eighty something <laughs> times a song, whatever that song is, where he says enemy. enemy! Enemy like fifty, well, like eighty times in a song, and it's the same kind of enemy every, like at least over half of those. Da-da. But yeah, just whatever we were talking about the issues thing with all their like best songs being like those early ones. No, it, it just made me think of that. Well, well issues was what was me just moved. Yeah, uh, everyone wanted to hear Tyler Carter and uh, Michael Bond. That's what that was because that was the sound of. What was me? I mean, it wasn't their first album because their first album was like a unique piece of art, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. It's so different. Uh, There's a reason why they were the biggest rise band at the time, for sure. And then everybody, everybody started sounding like them. I hate that, but it's also kind of the way of life, too. Just bands getting copied. Like, yeah, it's like, you know, what? do you remember what happened to Louisville when Knock Loose happened? Every band in Louisville turned into like a hardcore beatdown band. Every single band in Louisville wanted to be knocked loose so bad. Well, the the reason for that is because it worked. Yeah. We did the same thing. We did the same thing. Uh, Illustrator did the same thing. We wanted to be artifacts. Yeah, but I think... Oh. Because artifacts made it. That was the thing. Mm-hmm. We, uh, people want to make it and it's like i i played what i thought was cool and i was like oh well what they're making is fucking awesome i want to see if i can write something similar to it like they would take minor chords and make a major chords yeah Ha <laughs> ha. 
<laughs> so yeah, I, I I heard that and I was like, I wrote some stuff similar because I wanted that sound of like the drastic change of like that minor to major was really cool. Yes, it was so cool, and they would change. They would actually change. I wouldn't say I would say modes. They changed modes. They went from a Dorian mode to a Lydian mode, which Dorian is sad, Lydian's happy. So uh, like, so they went from a minor, just just minor. <laughs> Two, uh, that might have been. I'm gonna fuck that up. That's like minor. And this is major. So yeah. they went from sad to happy right after a whole certain song, and like that was usually their breakdown is like sad to happy. So. It's I mean, they didn't have stuff quite that heavy, but you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean. I, was, I don't know how to explain it any other way. Listen to Artifacts. They're great. Shout out Artifacts to Brian. Artifacts Pareo. Shout out to Brian for having a tattoo on his middle finger. We became good friends after I found out that he had an Artifacts tattoo. And not shout out to Jordan Haynes, the guitarist of Artifacts, for not answering my FaceTime whenever I wanted to show him Brian's tattoo. I remember that now. Yeah, he was like, hey, there's a tattoo of this guy. Like, <laughs> hey, one of my close friends has a tattoo of Artifacts on his fingers. It's and like, I tried to call him, didn't answer my face. Dude, time. I was so happy when I got to talk to the lead singer of New Medicine. Yeah. When you let me do that, I was like, dude, I listened. I saw you at, uh, I saw you at an Avenged Sevenfold tour like ten years ago. Yeah. And I loved your music back then. I was like, Rich Kids was insane, and I was talking about a couple of his songs that I just loved. And I was like, damn, I didn't know you guys were still around. I thought you broke up. I just hadn't heard anything about him. I wonder if he would answer a FaceTime. For don't. me, no, not right now. <laughs> Just don't. I wonder if he would sit down and have a conversation. He might, but we have to make it more comfy in here. Yeah, he would be. He wouldn't come out here. I don't think. Probably not. Where does he live? Nashville. Oh, he might. We he might come out here. Yeah, if potentially. You know, that's close enough. Yes, we tried to be. I'll say we tried to be something similar to Artifact Pro, but just like our style. I just wanted to make our stuff enjoyable to play as long as possible so it's like the more complex it is the more fun it was yeah songs are really enjoyable to play when you gotta have the click going on in your head and you're counting like one two three one two three one two three four five one two three four one two three four five one two three four five <laughs> one two three four five six one two three one two three uh what was the thing that we did i think we did one there was there was some specific timing that we used a lot, and I think it was one two three four one two three four one two three four five six one two three four one yeah. two three four one two three four one two three four five six one. I can't remember. We did that, and then we did we started dabbling right towards the end. Uh, the only reason that we wanted to do this, and the only reason that we wanted to do this, is because me and Justin noticed that in the first song on Artifacts' Passenger album. They have a chorus in 5-4. It's yeah. the only time I'd ever heard anyone use 5-4 in a musical way to where it, you could still feel the beat. Yeah. And it wasn't like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3. It was like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. One, it was like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Like, I don't know. Something about something about the way that uh, Corey Eves played the drums for it, it was very easy to get into. And then the way that their singer uh luke yeah lucas lucas uh the way that he wrote the the lyrics i just loved i mean it was like it worked really well so i started dabbing into five four going into six so it's like one two three four five one two three four five one two three four five six well that's seven five six seven one two three four five one two three four five one two three four five six seven yeah and uh so I was just like, oh, I love it. I love the way that people are being musical about things. Now it's like I look back and I'm like, God, man, there's so many good bands that are so talented that will just never be heard. Yep. It's like these guys, they could write some crazy stuff, but it doesn't mean it sells. People want to dance. all that matters. Yeah. That's all that matters is that I like anything that sells, right? Like, I think one of the best bands out there is Icarus the Owl. I think one of the best bands out there is uh, a lot like a lot like Birds. They're insane musicians. Yeah, Both of those really bands, good. insane musicians. They'll never be heard on the radio. I, there was a time in my life where I think I was listening to a lot like Birds every single day for like a year Dude, straight. That, their second album was so freaking fantastic. 
I like uh, the animated music videos of like them going to like, each house or the going inside the house and going to each room of the house. Yeah. I forgot what song that was, but that video uh, I thought was so fucking That cool. was extremely Dance Gavin Dance, but super good. Super good. Like they made stuff that I was like, dude, how do you make music like this? And then I was like, I could probably make music like this if I just sat down and really like tried to write something similar to it, but it wouldn't be as good because a big part of, in my opinion, uh, a big, the biggest part of the sound of when you make music is your mix. Like, yeah. even if you make amazing music, just to, almost, even if you make amazing music, if the mix sucks, it's almost always going to suck. The only exception I've ever heard in my life where the mix was terrible and it got huge was fucking Knocked Loose. <laughs> Their first album sounded like shit. <laughs> See, now, but it's so, yeah. everyone loves it. Yeah, um, I'm not saying it's a bad album. Not a bad album. It's really great. Have you seen like I just even it, some massive bands today still have really bad mixes? I like, just uh, think they should if they remastered it. I think people would go nuts. Yeah, uh, I think so too. Laugh Tracks is an amazingly mixed album. Because um, uh, Septora, Septora, however you say it, there's this massive band like literally playing to full stadiums of people. And I was like, okay, I'll check it out because it's like an older band and one of their their old drummer. Uh, is everyone thinks it's gonna be the new Slipknot drummer? Yeah, yeah, I've heard. And I mean, they're already playing. Yeah, he's already there. Anyway, but um, yeah, <sighs> like they, I wanted to see like what his drum parts were, like just see how he played on those recordings. I started listening back to him, and I'm like, oh my god, these sound terrible, and they're filling stadiums. Yeah, that's where I'm like, how? How, how, like they made good quality sound even in the seventies, like yeah. early seventies when like with, you know, Led Zeppelin still has a great overall tone, fucking Sabbath, great overall tone, not that bad. I mean, it, it sometimes yes, but like, then you hear, I'll say, and I'm not saying anything bad about Prada, but Devil Wears Prada, when they went to Crummit and he, and it was before Crummit, I think knew how to like straighten up drums plagues that one was it plagues yeah i'm pretty sure it was plagues purple album yeah yeah plagues the drums are just a fucking mess i try to do a cover of, i try to do a cover of one of those songs and jordan haynes is like they didn't play to a click there no this is terrible they did not at all he was like i don't know how to edit this video and then we just scrapped it <laughs> <laughs> he didn't know how to he like uh either i couldn't hit the drums perfectly enough and I couldn't have a click because he didn't like they didn't have one. So. I don't know, dude. It, it was Plagues is an amazing album. Like I've listened to that thing over and over and over. And I'm like, damn, this thing is so rough, but I get it. It's a good album. It is really good. It's mixed really well. I'll say mm -hmm. the mix is amazing because uh, Crumb made it and it was like the mix is great. But dude. <laughs> the drum it's just they're fucking it's clear that they did not play to a click it's all over the place it's speeding up it's slowing down who the fuck knows what's happening you still want to know one of my favorite drum things it's probably their most iconic drum fart to me and probably to a lot of other people but you're gonna recognize it i don't remember was it an intro Texas is South. Yeah, yeah. That was cool. That is a good, it's a good I intro. I love that part. It's a great intro. Dude, and it's like on a Zill bell, so it just rings. Dude, you talk about a style of drummer. You're talking like that. Uh, who was the drummer for, what was me, the original? The one, He was the drummer. He was the drummer for... Lifelines. He was the drummer for Of Machines. Very distinct sound. Did the same thing like a lot, mm -hmm. <laughs> but it was like I loved it. It sounded so twos. cool. Yeah, and that was it. Two over two, four over two. <laughs> yeah, just shit like that. Loved it. It was like so. Yeah, I get that that type of intro. Uh, I don't know, man. I love I love DOS drums and I want to replace my Woody Drum drums so bad. Yeah, here we go. Here's a get a black four. kit. 
One day that's going to be like a really crisp tones. Oh, I hope so. Yeah, that's how the. Oh, yeah, we got to. We're going to try to mic or uh, capture your drum, your snare. Yeah. Uh, sample it. We're going to yeah. sample your, your kit. Capture. Capture it. Yeah. Capture that shit. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Which, honestly, I mean, if we go to Best Buy after this. We could stop by my house and maybe do it, but that's that's too much setup. That'd be a different day. It's one of those like you could bring a tom. <laughs> I could just yeah, I could just bring everything and just put it in front of a microphone, like not even on the stand, and just boom. Bass well, drum, I just hit it with the stick. That's the thing is, I want I want to know how to sample stuff like that. So I I'm like, there has to be. In Ableton specifically, there or maybe it's not Ableton. I don't remember exactly. The velocity. There's a velocity control. There's 127 different velocities. Yeah, so you got to record 127. Uh, you can, and that would be a legit way to do it. And I was like, God, we'd have to go all the way from bottom to top and then do it with a flam as well. Yeah. Because really, realistically, that's like all you need. Because... Uh Blake did sample my kit once, and uh, it was just, we didn't make it that detailed. We just go like, soft hit, soft hit, a little harder, a little harder, a little harder, and just did like, like, I think like six different types of hits, and just did like a few of each one. That's cool. It's interesting. I would so if you were in the music industry and you were in a position where you were not doing anything if I was in the music industry what what position would you want to be other than playing on stage what would you want to do you already know this you should know this take a guess lights no sound nope uh 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 fluffer it's the only <laughs> other drum position drum tech yes I would definitely be a drum tech. I would do that. Except for <sighs> the worst part is the setup and the teardown of drums. And that's all you're doing. <laughs> that's all I'm doing. Changing heads. That's why you're a drum tech. But tuning. you get to do it. And you don't even get to play. Yeah, tuning and like doing uh, sound checks and stuff like that. But I mean, you're still a part of the band essentially. Like, yeah, if that drummer doesn't feel good for the night, you, at least you get to play. Yeah, that'd be that'd be kind of sick. <laughs> it's uh, like, hey, you need a water, bro? Yeah, here you go. And he like spiked it. Pass out. It's like, oh, I don't know what happened to him, oh, guys. Him. Just move him out of the way. Call 911. Next night they find out that you spiked it and you're dead. No, they would never know. Oh, I'm sure they probably would. I'd commit mass suicide. I'd have three people kill themselves <laughs> all at once. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, uh, for now me, your phone's got that. To be completely honest, I would, uh, I'd really like to be just a songwriter. Mm -hmm. Mainly because uh, they have to make a killing. Yeah. If I, and I thought about this the other day, I was like, well, we could try to see how many songs that me and Austin could just write in a week's time, in a month's time. It's just mm -hmm. like every day, What what is the goal? We're going to try to write 30 songs this month, one per day or like two per day or three per day kind of a thing and see how they come out. It's just a, and I know how, when I, when I used to do, uh, when I was writing the second EP that we never released, uh, I, it was flow of consciousness. I did not stop myself in any capacity when I was writing. Yeah. It was no, I was just like, okay, what sounds cool? This sounds cool. Did it moved on. What sounds cool? This sounds cool. Did it moved on. What sounds catchy? This sounds catchy. Did it? Moved on. And it was like, I could get songs out very quickly because of that. So it's one of those like songwriters. I just feel are like they're on their way to being professional musicians, but it's got to, you've got to prove it to everyone that you can be first. Yeah. There was a, there was one guy. I can't remember his name. Hardy. No, <laughs> <laughs> but I can't remember his name, but like I went to his like music profile, his writer's profile on, uh, it's either Spotify or something else. And I kid you not, all these songs that this dude is a part of had like 2 billion plays, 2 billion plays, 
2 billion plays, 1.5 billion plays, billion plays, 1.7 billion plays. And I was just like, that dude's got to be raking in the money. He's got to be. Like, gotta that be. dude's got a mansion and he has no worries about not getting a paycheck ever again. Uh-huh. And then he's respected by everyone because he makes hits. And then, uh, who, who, what else was it? Uh, I'm sure he's made flops too. Everybody does. So you, I, I would like to be a songwriter just for the, it's like, oh, that's what I do is I write songs. That's, you know, yeah. and then you just, it's a pat, weirdly a passive income. Mm-hmm. It is a weird ass passive income. Uh, what else was I going to say about that? So as long as you build up your catalog, I mean, it's like you're making a hundred dollars a week from this song. That's doing well. And then you got this song that's making you a hundred a week. And you got this one that's making you a 20 a week. Like, I, I don't know. I guess those oh, are, I do remember what I was going to say. Uh, the music is the only thing that's copyrightable. That is copyrightable forever. Yeah. It's the only thing that once you have the rights, you don't ever have to give them up. They won't time out. It's not like an intellectual property like Mickey Mouse. There was a there's one artist. His name is Asterisk. We toured with him once uh, on the Comedy Charisma tour with Letdown, like the first one that we did. And I don't remember the name of the song, but I was talking to him and he had one song, like one song just popped off and got like 20 million plays. And everything else below that was at like 20,000, 25,000, whatever. That one song that got like the 20 million something plays bought him a house. Oh my God. Yeah. Only 20 million? That just makes me think of like, I'm going to bleep this. I don't know. He's got. But see, that, that Astros lot. dude, he released that by himself he didn't release it under a label which makes me just want to fucking because it's 85 percent, 80 fucking five 80 percent, even 80 percent. god you're i mean you're you're taking let me see I you make 10 million dollars for someone and they get eight they get eight eight million five hundred thousand here we go let me find this again okay right now the song is at 42 million in 42. The next, he has another song with two million but he's only got one hundred and thirty seven thousand. Listeners right now. 137,000 wow. monthly. Wow. But like, we'll say that 42 million. 42 million and what I thought, I guess. I mean, with that 42 million, I think you probably somewhere around like 250 grand. God, that's great. I got a house now. Of one song. See, and that's I'm a guy sure who, he drives a Tesla now too. That's a guy who's like, I had the worst place. I'm buying a nice house and leaving it. That's it. Like I, I swear to God, he's only like twenty. Like he, yeah, he is. Fuck. He looks very <laughs> young. That yes, now we have to play it. That's one of our old songs. I can't play the whole thing because I don't remember all of it. That's about all I can remember. I don't remember the next parts because I haven't played them in seven years. <laughs> it's honestly been that many years, yeah. Woo! This song is fun, though. Anyway, we're going to wrap this one up because uh, I'm afraid our shit's going to overheat. We are yeah. at, at about an hour, which is what we want, and I might cut this down depending. And the room's a little warm today, too, so it's, I'm surprised it hasn't already happened. It is a tit, tit bit fiddly warm. It also might be the fact that uh, we might be using the regular batteries, like the Sony-branded batteries, because I've noticed that they're not falling apart. 
Yeah, those are the wall outlet battery heats up mine pretty good too. Which is a problem for us. We don't need that. I wonder if they have a battery pack that's Sony specific, you know, to where we can plug it in a wall. <laughs> it sounds like we're about to do a commercial for it. I wonder if there's a specific Sony battery. I lost battery power to my headphones. I can't hear anything. Yeah. So let's play a song. Uh, let's play uh fucking. <laughs> okay, let's play uh what what's what's that song? I'm gonna uh. Is it more than sugar? Did you hear that? No. <laughs> oh, I go. <laughs> I don't know. It's something weird, but here we go. 